What's up, guys? It's your boy, the Bad Wolf. Are you guys ready to get into it? Y'all ready for this? So what's up, guys? What's this video about? Well, glad you asked. Now, before we get into it, I want to thank everybody for hitting that bell, like, and subscribe. Please, please help me. We are so close to 50, and I don't know if uh, they got me shadow banned or what, but it started dragging right around 42,000 subscribers. So if you're watching this and you have not subscribed, you are the problem. You. <laughs> all right. So, uh, but yeah, I would appreciate it if you haven't. Just go ahead and hit that. You don't even have to hit all the uh, notifications. Just subscribe. You're already coming back to the channel and keeping an eye on your boy. So just make it, make it, make it so, make it happen. All right. What is this video about? Um, some people have asked me, you know, uh, you know, um, what is it? Uh, you know, I haven't made a whole lot of videos. Yeah, I've been just studying, 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 studying. Um, just got a new, well, not brand new. I ain't making that kind of money, but uh, got a new vehicle, all in the trust and done properly, all in the private. So. That's awesome. I may or may not make a video on that because um, I basically already gave you guys all the information on how to do that. But some people out there might want to step by step. So we'll take a look at that later. This particular video is about the art artificial person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Versus the private person okay so i just happen to have black laws dictionary number 11 the deluxe all right so in here page 1379 on persona okay so persona all right let's see do, 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 do. Okay, so persona is Latin, created in 1812 for in Roman law, a means a person. So persona means a person akin to an individual human being. Okay. So now we drop down to persona ficta, which is Latin, which means false mask. So that means that ficta is false, which means false, fictitious, where they get that word from, ficta, which is Latin. And then, so persona means mask. Okay, so who are you? What are you? What kind of mask are you wearing? What do you have over your face when you go out? Who are you? Who are you, baby? Yeah. Okay. So it goes 1893, historical, that persona ficta means a fictional person, such as a corporation. Okay, so what they're doing here is they're talking about the political hemisphere of law okay so not in law of law meaning a private subsection doing its own thing based on the original law which is the constitution but over here so you've got your constitution your rights and everything so it's not operating in it but of it so next to okay so now we go up to what is an artificial person? <clears throat> so this is what they're doing is when our parents gave them the state of the name government, they don't have direct jurisdiction over the living person. They have it over the artificial person. What is the artificial person? Well, that's what everybody calls the straw man. Okay, your nom de gore, Latin for war name. 
your public transmitting utility. Okay. Now this does not mean that they have they if you do something that's a crime that they can't step in and make you pay for that because you've damaged somebody or something. But everything else is a statutes, and statutes are for artificial corporations, artificial persons. A person can be treated as a corporation, a corporation can be treated as a person. Okay, Supreme Court already ruled on these things. So under artificial person. 17c it says an entity such as a corporation created by law okay so by it the law gave them the ability to create artificial entities because once again in this maritime jurisdiction that they operate with the gold fringed american flag well gold fringed u.s corporate flag rather Okay, so it is a corporation, an entity, which is created by law. So man, God created man, man created laws and corporations to then govern other entities. And man, if needs being, in the case of a crime. So, created by law and given certain, certain, so not all, certain so these entities are given certain legal rights and duties of a human being so not the same as a human being but of a human being so they've given them some attributes to resemble a human being but they're only giving some of these rights and some duties a being real or imaginary so an artificial can be a being can be real or can be imaginary. Who, for the purpose of legal reasoning, is treated more or less as a human being. So when you adopt the artificial name, your name in all capitalized letters, which is Capitus Demetrius Maxima, you are an artificial person, you are an entity, you are treated more or less like a human being, but you are not one when you use that persona, that mask. An entity is a person, but, but wait, for the purpose of due process and equal protection clauses, but is not a citizen for the purposes of privileges and immunities clauses in Article 4, Section 2, and in the 14th Amendment. Did you see what they did there? So, the entity is a person for the purposes of due process and equal protections clauses, but is not a citizen for the purposes of privileges and immunities clauses, okay? Who that you? Somebody's always a message in me. What? Spam. I don't even have an account with those people. Man, people out here spamming and trying to scam you and people trying to pretend to be me in chat groups. Remember, people, the bad wolf only does things through Black Site 32. And I will never ask you for any payments or anything else in any chats, uh, sections and messengers and whatever else. Everything is done through the site. Okay. I'm glad some of you guys out there are smart enough that... Uh, you know, they're like, yeah, the wolf don't talk like that. Yeah, come on now. Don't send them anything. Don't open up anything. Yeah. Okay. So what are the other... Okay, so also termed for an artificial person. So other terms for the artificial person. Conventional person. Fictitious person. Juristic per person, which is where they get jural, because here it comes next juridical person that's who they have jurisdiction over and the legal person 
Now, what's interesting here, and once again, I found many mistakes that Black Law's Dictionary has made. They include the moral person, which should not be included in, well, there are different types of persons, so it can be con concluded that, yes, that is a type of person, but that is a private person, which in here they messed up because they have the moral person, and then it says see artificial person, which is in there. So that really should say, it shouldn't say uh, artificial for the moral person, but okay, we'll let it slide. But ye who made Black Law's Dictionary, because the moral person is a living being, but I guess they're trying to include it in there. But that should not be included. The living being should not be included as one of the names of an artificial person. Okay, so that's a mistake. Another mistake I found in their book. All right. Now, moving on in that subsection, and I guess this is why they try to lump them all together, but it's not the same thing. But it's in the ballpark. So we'll let the baby have their bottle. But anyway, so it goes on to say, a control person, I don't know what that is, obviously something that they can control. Fictitious person, an international person, juridical, juristic, legal, moral, private, and public person. So now let's take a look at private person, because we always know the word private means foreign. So it says, see private person. So slide right over. A private person is... One, someone who does not hold public office because you're in the private. This is why I always tell you guys we're in the private, right? So you should always be signing things, private person and UCC 1 308, not reserve or not waiving my rights. I'm reserving them. So someone who's not in public office or serving in the military. Okay. Private person also is labeled as a number two. Civil law and entities such as, so not it, not the same thing as, but such as a corporation or partnership that is governed by private law. Okay. So what do they say here? Uh, control person. A public person is a sovereign government or a body or a person delegated authority under it. So international person. Let's see what that says real quick. What is an international person? So how are you guys doing out there? Did some of you guys really just answer me? You know I can't hear you, right? <laughs> That's cool, though. I appreciate you. International law. International person. An entity. Is that word again? having a legal personality in international law, one who being a subject of international law enjoys rights, duties, and powers established in international law and has the ability to act on the international plane. Okay. Once again, it didn't sound very human. I'll see if we can find control person, see what that is. Mm 
Control person, someone who has actual control of or significant influence over the issuer of securities. As by directing corporate policy, the control person is subject to many of the same requirements applicable to the sale of securities by the issuer, also termed controlling person. Hmm. All right. So now that we know that there, the key terms here are private person. Let's see here. We already talked about the juridical. Okay. Juridical person means a non human legal person. A juridical person is a non human legal person that is not a single natural person. So, once again, we are the private person, we are the natural person. Okay. It says, but an organization recognized by law as a fictitious person, such as a corporation. And has it is it is authorized, meaning somebody has authority over it with duties and rights that are recognized as a legal person and having a distinct, which means separate, distinct is different, distinct identity. This includes any incorporation, organizations, corporations, government agencies, and NGOs. Not sure what an NGO, a non-government office, maybe. Let's see. Non-governmental organizations. There you go. It's pretty close, right? Oh, so an NGO and you not many NGOs in the United States are qualified as exempt from state. state and federal taxes. This legal, legal status makes it easier for NGOs to operate as nonprofit organizations because they do not have to pay on the income they receive. If an NGO wants to receive an exemption from income taxation from the federal government, the NGO applies uh, to the Internal Revenue Service There are many types of NGOs listed in the Internal Revenue Code that are eligible for tax-exempt status. Generally, there are educational, religious, charitable, scientific testing for public safety, literary purposes, and certain sports, and do not play a partisan political role. There you go. So participating in the political NGOs organized for political purposes receive limited exemptions. Hmm. There you have it.
Okay, and now they're just talking about the FAR, FARA. If you're here operating as a foreign government, then they are supposed to register. All right, so now we know what a juridical person is versus a private person. The juridical one is a non-human legal entity. Okay, that is what they control is the non-human legal entity that you are representing. So what it then makes sense to if one is operating in the private okay so before you became this entity there was no entity before you were born there wasn't one they didn't have one sitting there waiting for you to slide into its uh meat suit if you will so that would mean that if you have the choice and the right to become one, you have the choice and right to stop being one or to not use it, okay? And go back into what? The private person. I would highly recommend creating your own affidavit of um, non-resident. Wouldn't hurt to keep it in your travel binder. Or if you're dealing with court cases and you have everything else figured out, you kind of know how to move with that. But having that, because if you're letting them know that you're a non-resident and you have not committed crime, then how do they have jurisdiction over you? Okay. Now, some of you guys want to take some of these bits and pieces and, you know, kind of do whatever you want to do. That's not the case. See, the problem is, is that you have to challenge everything from your jur jurisdiction over you. You know, you want to claim or prove who you are, because really the, the the burden of proof is on them to prove that you're in their jurisdiction. We're going to say, well, we have the name. Okay. Show me. Where's the contract? Is that name a registered entity with the state? Are you a registered entity? Are you foreign? How does this court have ownership over me as a living person? Okay, so you got to put it all together. So one of the other things I will give you guys before I jump off, well, actually just probably make another video, is I've been hearing that some people have been using Form 56, you know, to label somebody as a fiduciary. That's great. Uh, if, you know, it's for your purposes, whatever you're using it for. But be sure to not use Form 56 f the f is for entities corporations you will most likely be flagged for fraud so do not use the form 56 f unless you're using it for a something labeled as a an actual corporation okay so that is it my friends that is it i will chat with you later you know what to do. Thumbs up. No, I'm just going to hang out. Okay, that's cool. You can stay around while I research more stuff. <laughs>